Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Nima. I've been a corporate account executive for many years and I'm all about helping you understand the financial knowledge that I've learned all throughout the years. Now, whether you're just starting out your financial journey or you've been at it for a while, I've got your back. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about cars. And this is specifically for how to get a car with no down payment. Now, if you need to buy a car, but you lack the cash for a down payment, you can typically finance the whole purchase without putting any money down. Now, with that being said, however, interest rates will be significantly higher by doing this. So I'm providing four key takeaway ideas to show you that there are still some ways to get around to getting that car with no money down while still getting lower rates as well. I'll dive into that throughout this entire video. Now, first off, making a down payment when financing a car is standard practice, but with new car prices rising steadily for the past three years, the size of a down payment is going to grow too. The average new car cost about $48,275 according to Kelly Blue Book data, which means that with a 20% down payment, that comes out to $9,655. Now you might be thinking, what the I don't have that kind of cash. And honestly, I don't blame you. The biggest thing that always has worked for me is negotiating so much to the point where I just literally walk away because they aren't giving me the deal that I wanted. And as I'm about to walk out the door, they call me back in because they want to settle or at least give me a number that I'm more happy to deal with. I mean, listen guys, coughing up close to $10,000 just because the dealership is potentially pressuring you doesn't actually have to be the case. It is still very possible to buy a car with no down payment. So if you are looking in the market to buy, here's how. The first takeaway is to check your credit report and your credit score. Make sure your credit report is up to date and accurate and see where your credit score lies as well. It's possible to get an auto loan with just about any credit score, but the higher your credit score, the better terms you can actually qualify for. Although auto lenders typically use a different credit score than the one that you personally see when you check your own credit, your FICO score is a good indicator of what lenders will actually see. Now here's an example of the FICO scores range from 300 to 850 and how they are divided into five different tiers. Now, exceptional is from 800 to 850. Very good is from 740 to 799. Good is from 670 to 739. Fair is from 580 to 669. And poor is from 300 to 579. Now, good exceptional credit generally translates into lower auto loan annual percentage rates or otherwise known as APRs. And for example, as of 2023, if you want to buy a new car, the average auto loan APR for borrowers with a FICO score of around 720 is 5.8%. But if you have a FICO score around 550, you could pay almost double that amount with an average APR of 10.8%. So it just goes to show you how a significant change in your credit score can really reduce the interest rate. And if you're wondering, <laughs> well, come on, buddy, what can I do to improve my credit score? <laughs> There's honestly many ways to do it, but to get a head start, you can do the following. Bring any late accounts current, pay all your debts on time, setting up things like auto pay can actually ensure that you don't miss any due dates, pay down existing debt to lower your credit utilization ratio, and avoid applying for new credit. This is honestly one of the biggest ones if you are trying to buy a car right away. Now, before I jump into the second item, if you find that these videos and the channel are helpful to you, I'd really appreciate it if you can please hit the like button and consider subscribing as it really helps the channel grow. Now the second takeaway to helping you get a car with a zero down payment is shopping around for different car loans. Now car loans can vary a whole lot. So do your homework and shop around. Consider auto dealerships, local credit unions, banks, or alternative loan providers. While you can finance your car through an auto dealership, that's not always the most affordable option. Now before visiting the car lot, check current auto loan rates on 
online and compare the different loan options. Filling out a preliminary loan application and getting pre-approved for an auto loan can really give you a good idea of the loan amount and the terms you may qualify for. And honestly guys, it'll save a lot of time arguing and negotiating with the dealership. Going through the pre-approval process will also give you some leverage to negotiate better loan terms with the dealer so that you're not getting screwed over on the price. Now the next biggest thing is to limit your loan applications to a short period of time to reduce the number of hard inquiries on your credit report. Too many inquiries can lower your credit score pretty quickly, but lenders typically treat multiple inquiries within a few weeks as just one inquiry. So putting them all in at once or within a few weeks is much better than spacing them out into separate months. Now guys, once you've had the opportunity to compare different car loans, look at how much you actually plan to borrow, what the length of the loan is, where the APR is set, and from there, you can go ahead and negotiate between lenders to get the best loan at the best rate that you can afford. You should let the lenders fight for acquiring you, not you fighting around to see which lender to choose. Now, the third biggest takeaway on this list is using a co-signer to get your car loan. Now, if you are fortunate enough to have a parent, a family member, or someone you can trust in general to co-sign for you, then you really have a great shot at getting your car loan at a good rate. However, this does have downsides to consider. If you miss any payments, both your credit score and your co-signer's credit score will likely decline. And I think this goes without saying honestly, but depending on your co-signer, that can complicate your relationship with them if it leads to conflicts. So just be extra careful guys. And if you really want to play in the right way, keep organized records to minimize the disagreements going forward with you and your co-signer. Now, fourth on the list and the last key takeaway that I have on this list is saving up for whatever down payment you can actually afford. Now I get it, at the beginning of this video, I said that you could do this with zero down payment. I totally understand and I'm not just racking up this entire video so that at the end I could tell you, you should pay with a down payment. But just hear me out for a second. While you can get your car with no down payment, it is in your best interest to try and at least put some money down if you can, whatever that amount may be. Now, as you can imagine, not making a down payment can leave you underwater on your loan because of the value of the cars and how they depreciate quickly. You can typically make a down payment for under 20% and most dealers tend to accept that if you simply negotiate. In fact, guys, a simple Google search will show you that car buyers in 2019 made an average of 11.7% in down payments due to the increasing cost of vehicles. So just negotiate and pay some kind of down payment if you can. Of course, the more money you put down on the loan, the greater your chances of getting a lower interest rate, which can save you substantially in the long run. Now, I have had countless friends that have delayed their car buying until they could actually save up for some kind of minimal down payment. Meanwhile, in the process of saving up some money, you can also use that time to boost your credit score so that you'll better qualify for more favorable loan terms. So again, just to quickly list out the pros and the cons, the pros of no down payment are you can get your car right away instead of waiting months or years to save up for a down payment and you can keep more cash in hand. Now the cons of no down payment, you'll obviously have to pay higher monthly payments because without a down payment, you'll have to finance the full cost of the car. You'll have associated costs such as state taxes, registration fees, dealer documentation costs, and potential transportation fees. You'll also have increased interest charges because depending on your credit worthiness, your income and other factors, the lenders may offer less favorable terms and higher interest rates without a down payment. Even at low interest rates, financing a larger loan amount means that you'll pay more for interest over the loan term, especially if you need a longer loan term to make your payments affordable. Now, the last thing is the risk of the negative equity. New cars do depreciate at an average of 20% off the first year. That's pretty much as soon as you just drive it off the lot. And without a down payment, you'll soon owe more than what the car is actually worth. This is essentially known as you being upside down in your loan. But there you have it, guys, an entire breakdown of helpful tips to buying a car without dropping any cash up front. Boost that credit score, scout around for loans, think about a co-signer, and try to scrape up any doable down payment to the best of your availability. And remember, going for zero down means quick car ownership, but it also means higher monthly payments, more interest, and the chances of owing more than the car's actually worth.
worth. So just think about it before making any financial decisions and mix and match these tips for a smart way to tackle getting your new ride. If you found this video to be helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos coming soon.